How do you abide in Christ? That's what we're going to be talking about today. This is a Truth Transforms Truth Nugget. A daily dose of truth for your daily transformation. Welcome back to another Truth Nugget. We're going to continue here with part three of Abiding in Christ. This is part three of a sermon that I've clipped up, and uh, we've been answering a whole number of questions in this sermon. We've been answering questions like, how do you know when you're truly abiding in Christ? How do you know when you're not abiding in Christ? What are some of the benefits of abiding in Christ? And we're going to look at some other things here today. Uh, actually, today we're going to look at how do you how do you abide in Christ? How do you do this? How do you actually abide in Christ? And then we'll probably it will probably be tomorrow where we'll be looking at that last point. What does it look like to consistently abide in Christ? Let's keep this idea before us throughout this whole sermon because Jesus is the vine. We must abide in Him in order to bear fruit in our Christian walk. As we've been working through this, I've backed it up just a little bit to kind of reorient us where we were. Uh, instead of doing that today, I'm just going to uh, summarize some things and maybe play a few clips um, so I don't have to go back too far, and then we'll get back to where we were in the sermon. So what are the benefits of abiding in Christ? That's what we looked at yesterday, and uh, we know that, uh, just, just to, let me just read something to kind of summarize this here. When you abide in Christ, you will experience his peace more often. You will be less frustrated, uneasy, and agitated. You will be filled with more joy in the Lord. Your sadness and despair will be minimized. When you abide in Christ, he will build our faith. Our faith in, in God and trust of his good plans will grow. We will be comforted. We will be empowered. Our hearts will be changed. Our minds will be renewed. We will experience cleansing. We will sense God's presence more often. We will have a growing desire to worship God and glorify the name of Christ. We will have a growing desire to spend time with God in prayer and will desire to meditate on God's word and feed upon it for our nourishment. We will pray more frequently, more fervently, and for more extended periods of time. Uh, this is the union that we have in Christ by abiding in Christ. This is the benefit that we have as a benefit of having walking closely with the Lord and abiding in Christ. Uh, there's a wonderful union in Christ that comes from abiding in him. And this is what Warren Wearsby has to say about it. He said, our union with Christ is a living union, so we may bear fruit, a loving union, so that we may enjoy him and a lasting union so that we need not be afraid. Well, that's where I left it off yesterday. I don't think I need to back it up anymore. We'll just pick back up where we were and I'll be back here for some final words. So I pray that we can all enjoy these benefits of abiding in Christ. And number four, how do you abide in Christ? You say, well, I just don't know how to do it. Well, I've I've, all, I've pretty much answered this question already, but it's worth repeating. We ought to devote ourselves to the ministry of the Word and prayer. Uh, yes, that verse is found where it's speaking to the apostles are saying to themselves, we, we, we need to devote ourselves to the ministry of the Word and prayer. That's true of all Christians. We need to let God's Word minister to us and let it minister us to us where we are in, in our life. And we need to let it, the, those verses that just pop out at us, I. Uh, uh, Bible reading plans are great and all those things are great, but when you're reading and a verse just jumps out at you, just stop and interact with that verse and ask God, okay, God, there's something about this verse that's like leaping off the page. So I got my highlighter. I'm going to highlight it. What do you want me to know from this verse? There, there must be something from this verse uh, that I need to apply in my life. Uh, we need to pay attention to those things. Uh, we need to just slow down sometimes and let God speak through his word. Uh, we need to take time to pray and meditate on God's word. Sometimes we just need to, to, to stop things that are going on in our life for the day or something or for part of the day. Or just, 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 just stop the activity. Stop all the good activity, the Christian activity. Stop being like Martha and, and just Jesus is saying, no, just come here. Just spend time with me. Let's be more like Mary. 
Be still and know that I am God, he declared to the psalmist. So we need to just spend time with God. We just need to slow down sometimes. We just need to get into his word and prayerfully meditate on his word and let his word speak to us. And so the answer is the answer that is always the answer. I swear in nearly three years of preaching, I feel like every sermon is like, read your Bible, pray, and worship God. And that's your application, okay? Go read your Bible, we're done for the day. But it's true. It's like every single passage leads to that. To get into God's Word more and let God's Word minister to us more. And, and that is what needs to, to happen. And if you, don't, if you go to pray and you don't know where to start, and you're like, well, I pray for these people, I pray for the church, I pray for the gospel to be proclaimed, and I just kind of work my way through the list, and I don't really know what else to pray, just worship God. Just worship Him. That's a model that Jesus gave us. Worship is prayer. And so we can worship God in our prayer. We can worship God in our time of prayer. Of course, Jesus modeled it because He began the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be Your name. Hallowed be Your name. He began with this reverence, this reverent worship. He addressed the Father and went straight into reverent worship. He began with praise and adoration. And we see this all throughout the Psalms. We see Psalm 100 verse 4 tells us, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. David worshiped God in prayer in Psalm 103.1. When he praised God, he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. So we want to enter his gates with thanksgiving. We want to give him praise. I worship him. I worship him for his attributes. God, you are sovereign. God, you are majestic. God, you are holy. God, you are righteous. God, you are truth. And we worship you for that. We give you praise for that. God, thank you for saving me. God, thank you for making me whole. God, thank you for bringing me out of the pit of despair and making me whole through the blood of Christ. Just worship God for what he's done for you. Worship God for, for what all the blessings that he's given you. Worship God for the eternal life that you've received. We can worship God and thank God for any one of these things. Thank God for the work that he's doing in your heart. Thank God for the work that he's doing in and someone, in, some, someone you know in their heart, a family member's heart. I thank God for all of these things, for His amazing grace, and ask Him to continually fill you with an abundance of His grace, joy, love, peace, and hope. As I preached a few weeks ago, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Let's pray that prayer. Pray that God, fill me with your joy, fill me with your peace, and fill me with an abundance of your hope, because you have promised that. And surely God will answer that prayer. Uh, surely he will answer that prayer in our lives. Amen. We have so much to be grateful for. We need to be thanking God for all of these things, for his wonderful redemption. And let's end it there with that benediction right from Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. I pray that's a blessing for you today and that uh, gives you great hope and reminds you of all to be, of all you and I are to be thankful for. God bless you, and thank you for joining me for today's Truth Nugget. If you're new here, go ahead and hit subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you're notified of all new videos. Hit that like button if you could. That helps to reach more people. And we'll be continuing with this sermon in the last part in tomorrow's Truth Nugget. God bless. Truth Nuggets are a ministry of preaching for God's glory. To find out more about other resources available and ways that you can support the ministry, be sure to visit preachingforgodsglory.org.